Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch. Welcome back to the Game Dev Fundamentals series. Now, what we're looking at is, you know, basic building blocks of game development, not tools, but actual techniques. And today we are looking at something called a normal map. Now, we looked at a very close cousin to the normal map just a couple weeks ago called the height map. And it's the same basic premise. Now, the height map is all about basically deforming an underlying mesh using a grayscale image, where the value of uh, either the black to white value of that grayscale determined how high or low the image would go. And this was commonly used for land landscapes or terrain in game engines. Now today what we're looking at is normal maps. Now normal maps are very, very similar in concept, but slightly different in execution. And generally they're used in modeling to add detail where there is none. And the best way I can actually explain this is to show you it in action. Now here I am in Blender, and this is a simple flat plane. So it's a four-sided polygon or four vertices polygon. And what we're going to do is apply a texture to it. So imagine in, in your mind that this is a brick wall. Uh, so we're going to come in here. We've got a material already created. I'm just going to go ahead and add a texture to it. Uh, new texture. Open it up uh, from my desktop. And it's just a brick texture like so. And that's it. That's all that was really involved. But if you look at this, it doesn't look like a brick wall because there's no depth to it. So, you know, as I rotate here, when the light's bouncing off it, this looks like wallpaper. This basically looks like you plastered this texture on top of a flat plane, which is exactly what we've done. So if you want your game to look something like not wallpapered on, that's where one of two things has to happen. You either need to actually go into the polygons, subdivide the crap out of this, and actually, you know, make these surfaces extruded so that you know light bounces off it appropriately or dun, da, 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 the whole purpose of this video you use a normal map now what does a normal map look like well a normal map looks like this and it's a bluish purple color and i'll explain why in a few minutes but this is going to give us the depth on our surface so as it goes through and it's normal uv map so if it goes the zero zero coordinate from uv will be here and one one will be here and as it goes through it treats based off of these colors it as depth so then we get the illusion that there's a whole lot more polygons going on than there really are so now let's actually apply our normal map here so here's our surface like so let's add another texture to it create new uh, load that from file again that's on my desktop and this time i want my normal map what we just saw. So right now you're seeing that it's completely blue. But that's because it's using the color channel and obviously that's not what we want. So just head on down here, make sure that our UV map is selected and turn color off. Now what you actually want to turn on, the channel you want is normal. And right now you're seeing a lot of gradation. So basically where there's indents, etc., it's it's changing so when the lighting model calculates as if there's a lot more detail there. But there's way too much detail there. So what we want to do is just dial this back more towards that area. So, and we'll do it slightly positive. There we go. So now when we look at our texture, it's got a bit more of an illusion of depth. So when light is being cast off this, those little divots and such that are represented in the normal map are causing it to do things like cause shadows to refract light back a little bit different, which in turn makes it look a little bit more detailed. And this becomes a lot more pronounced when you go ahead and add um, here, let's add a light to the scene. Like so, a rotate Y90, like so. All right, so there now we have a light interacting. You can see the end result. So it, it influences the light. It works a little bit better. You've got more realistic shadowing going on because of those details. Now, if I go back, let's select our plane again, our normal. And as we, you know, change the amount, you can see how it interacts with everything else in the scene. So that is ultimately a normal map. Now, you're never going to get the same level of quality as if you um, model it underlying. But think about it at the same time. This takes up um, two triangles, four vertices, one face total to make this level of detail. And then the normal map does the rest. And there is some calculation involved on the GPU side to make the normal map look realistic. But let's well, obviously, let's take a look at this versus no normal map. 
See, there's just a level of realism there that you don't get otherwise. So there is a bit of a CPU hit for, or GPU hit while it's calculating the lighting of the normal map, but this is the GPU is made to calculate normal map. So it's very, very, very small. Whereas the alternative would be to model this in ultra high resolution, say 100,000 polygons for this mall to get the same level of detail. And it's way more work and 100,000 processed polygons or, you know, going through the graphic pipeline, it's going to take a buttload more work than it is going to be just to render this normal map. So a normal map is a great optimization way of getting detail. Now, one of the cool things about a normal map is you can actually generate it. I'm not going to get into this today, but I did it in a previous tutorial. I will link it if I can find it, but you can actually generate your normal maps. And this is normally how they're actually made is what you do is you model a low polygon surface. So for example, I could create this guy and then I could go ahead and create an ultra high resolution polygon surface that is the exact same dimension mentions as it, but with say a hundred times the, the actual polygon count. And in that one, I do our detail. And then what you do is you bake a normal map based off of those two surfaces. So you've got your low resolution polygon and your high resolution polygon object. And you basically bake the high res surface to the low res surface as a normal map. Um, and this build ability is built directly into Blender. I believe it's built into Maya and Max. Um, it's also available in tools such as Knald or XNormal. So there are a lot of tools out there for actually creating these normal maps for you. So you don't actually have to create this by hand. And that's a good thing because frankly, let's take a look at it. Do you have any idea how to paint that? I personally don't. Now, do you want to know what these values actually mean? It's actually pretty straightforward, and I'm going to use the Wikipedia page to actually explain it for me. Here we go. And what they've done is, like I said earlier, the height map. Height map is color encoded, whereas like a black value would be very low and a Y value would be very high. And basically they just manipulate one axis. So uh, generally it would be, if it's a Y up game, the Y axis. So they just determine the height and thus the name. Well, this is normal based. The normal is the direction of polygon of a direction, sorry, the direction of an individual polygon face is it's normal. And this guy can actually move in the three different directions. So instead of just representing uh, displacement along a single axis, a normal map will actually represent it along all three axes, which is the X, Y, and Z. Um, so here you can see the, the X channel is encoded from negative one to plus one uh, using normalized coordinates. So like 0 0.001 to uh, 0 0.99999 type thing. And that is the um, red to green channel. So basically um, your bitmap image will be uh, RGB and then often RGBA encoded. So red, green, and blue channels are all separately. So it's using the red channel value between 0 and 255 to represent displacement along the X axis. Then it's using the Y channel uh, from 0 to 255, sorry, the green channel in from the 0 to 255 range to represent plus and minus Y. And then finally it does the same thing in Z. So it's kind of like a height map, but a height map is dedicated entirely to one axis, whereas a normal map is dedicated to all three. Now the flip side is a height map you can paint. You can just pick up any paint image and basically draw it with, um, you know, uh, black or white image editing. Whereas a normal map is generally has to be generated. And that's about the only real difference. It's definitely one of those things you should be aware of. Almost every single modern game engine now supports normal maps. They're very uh, powerful. This is the way that high detail is done. Uh, even in your AAA games, basically they will have modeled a really, really ultra high resolution version and then a lower polygon, a real time polygon in game version. And sometimes they've got to do it anyways. They'd use one for cutscenes and the other one for in game or whatever. But what they will do then, again, is as I said earlier, is bake a normal map out of it. And I will link a tutorial down below that will show you the process for baking normal maps if you're a Blender user. All right, that's it for today. It's a fairly simple concept. If you grokked the concept of a height map, you will get the idea of a normal map. Really, it's the same thing. It's just instead of uh, grayscale, it uses all three channels of color. And it is one of those things that you should definitely be using if you're not already. You can get huge optimizations in your game. You can get a lot more detail out of it. And things will just generally look better if you master the art of normal maps. All right, that's it. See you all later. Bye.